Okay, hi there, welcome to a macro video. Uh, in this revision topic video, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at the reasons why a central bank or a government might opt for a managed floating currency system and also the options for intervention in currency markets if they want to influence, if they want to change the level of the exchange rate. So a managed floating currency happens when the central bank uh, chooses to intervene in the foreign exchange market designed to affect the value, the external value of one currency against another, oftentimes to meet specific macroeconomic objectives, which we'll talk about in a second or two. The latest IMF classification of countries using a managed floating system includes the likes of Brazil, South Korea, India, the Indian rupee, is a managed floating system. So too the Thai baht, uh, the Mexican peso, the Japanese yen. Many countries actually opt for a managed floating. Indeed, more countries opt for this than they do for a free floating system. Here's an example of a country which is a free, uh, sorry, a currency which is a free float, the euro set against the rupee, which is a managed floating currency. You can see that over the over the long term, over a 17 year period, the Indian rupee has depreciated against the euro. Back in 2001, about 42, 43 rupees would buy you a euro. Now it's now it's over 80. Why might a central bank, uh, perhaps working in conjunction with a government, why might they try to manage the currency through intervention? Well, a central bank might want to bring about a depreciation of the exchange rate if they're looking to improve the balance of trade in goods and services. You see, a fall in the currency helps to make exports more price and cost competitive in overseas markets. Perhaps a depreciation in the currency is also targeted, uh, favoured, because of the risk of a deflationary recession. Uh, a weaker currency makes import prices more expensive and again should stimulate the export sector. Or perhaps it's part of a, a medium term shift designed to try to rebalance an economy away from high levels of domestic spending on goods and services, tilting more towards increased export volumes and associated capital investment. Sometimes the central bank wants to appreciate, increase the value of the currency perhaps because they fear both demand pull and cost push inflation, or they think that a stronger exchange rate would help to bring down the cost, the price of imported capital, new technology, or essential inputs such as fuel uh, designed to enhance the long run growth potential of a country. Uh, there are other reasons. I mean, generically, uh, one reason to manage the exchange rate is to reduce the volatility of exchange rates, in part because if the currency is volatile, if there are big fluctuations from one month to another, that can increase investor risk and perhaps uh, damage potential trade and investment and business confidence. If the risk of overseas investors buying a government bonds goes up, for example, they might demand, if you like, a premium interest rate or yield on bonds as compensation for the volatility in exchange rates. Moving on, how can intervention work? What can, uh, what, what are the tools available uh, for central banks to intervene in the market to try to manage the exchange rate? The first option is direct buying and selling of a currency by changing reserves of foreign currencies. Now, this is a crucial point. So to manage a floating currency, the central bank will need enough reserves of foreign currency available should it need to intervene. A second option, second tool, is to change your own interest rates. So perhaps uh, monetary policy interest rates might be tilted one way or the other to achieve a desired change in the exchange rate because they affect flows of hot money across international financial markets. It's also possible to use the tax system to manage the exchange rate. For example, you might want to tax the interest on savings of foreign investors in a country that will be designed to uh, make saving in a country less attractive. You might want to tax, for example, the profits of uh, overseas subsidiaries. 
Let's quickly look at a currency intervention summary. Hopefully this slide when we get to the end will be a nice neat summary for you to, to uh, take a, a look at for your notes. Uh, so let's think about direct intervention first of all. We'll bring the diagrams into play in a second or two. So if you want your currency to depreciate, to go down in value, typically the central bank would go into the market and they would go into the currency market and they would sell their own currency, their home currency, and they would buy foreign currency. The result being that foreign currency reserves would increase. If they want the exchange rate to appreciate, they would go into the market and buy their own home currency, selling foreign currency reserves. As a result, those reserves will diminish. Uh, here's a good example. Just recently, I mean, Denmark actually has a fixed exchange rate against the euro. Um, but here's a good example of the Danish currency has been under downward pressure recently. And the Danish central bank has decided to intervene in the foreign currency market by buying up their own currency to support the nation's peg. So they sold just over half a billion krona, $60 million worth of currency. Uh, of course, that would add to their dollar reserves. Second option on intervention is through interest rates. So if you wanted your currency to depreciate, to go down in value, one option would be to lower your loan interest rates designed to cause a hot money outflow or perhaps just to diminish the hot money inflow. Either way, the currency could fall. Again, if you wanted the currency to appreciate, you might want to increase interest rates to attract inflows of hot money. The danger, of course, with that is that higher interest rates uh, might help to support the exchange rate but could also damage consumer spending, business confidence, prospects for the housing market, etc. There could well be a trade-off if you did that. There are alternative interventions. If you want your currency to depreciate, uh, one option is for the central bank to expand quantitative easing. That increases the domestic supply of money, uh, some of which will seep out of the economy and therefore bring the exchange rate down. QE also is designed to reduce the yield on bonds, and if interest rates go down, again, that makes an economy less attractive to if hot money flows. The government could also buy assets from overseas as part of a, an intervention strategy. If you want your currency to appreciate, well, perhaps you, you want to attract money into your currency. So you, know, you might want to reduce taxes on income from assets to attract overseas investors to buy your currency. Uh, analysis diagrams, always useful. To get those top KA marks. So here will be an intervention to cause a currency depreciation. Uh, the idea here would be you'll be going into the market to sell your currency and buy up foreign currencies. That would shift the supply curve for currency out to the right. Keteris Paribus, for a given level of demand, that would cause the exchange rate to fall. And if you wanted to appreciate your currency, then the central bank could go into the market and buy their own home currency uh, using reserves of foreign exchange that causes the currency demand for your currency to shift out to the right and other things being the same the equilibrium value the external value of the currency goes up british pound is a free floating exchange rate as it is against the uh, against as is the us dollar so this shows the british pound sterling to the us dollar from started 2015 to autumn 2019 and you can see that the pound has been on a pretty much a downward trajectory particularly in the aftermath of the Brexit referendum in 2016 and the pound has been quite volatile range between sort of one dollar twenty and one dollar nearly one dollar sixty over this period so with a floating exchange rate where the Bank of England doesn't directly intervene oftentimes you can get quite big movements in the exchange rate an interesting quote from the Bank of England from their website. We do not set the exchange rate. The UK has a free floating exchange rate, but our actions can indirectly affect the value of the pound. In other words, interest rates and QE can have an indirect effect, even if the UK government and the central bank do not specifically target the exchange rate. So there we go. Uh, an overview video on interventions in currency markets.